how to find the measure of interior angles in convex polygons. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to answer questions like the ones on the screen. What is the sum of the measures of the interior angles of an octagon? Or what is the measure of one interior angle of a regular octagon? And we should be able to do this for any kind of regular convex polygon. Um, this tutorial can be found on our website, mathwarehouse.com slash polygon, where you'll find a bunch of other goodies, including a uh, free worksheet with an answer key and other practice problems. Okay, so before we do anything else, actually, let's just make sure we're clear on what kind of shapes we're talking about. Okay, this tutorial is about convex polygons. Right, so poly means many, and you know we, this is this is about any multi-sided shape. So by the end of this tutorial, you should be should be able to talk about triangles, quadrilaterals, pentagons, any polygon that's convex. I'll go over what convex means in a minute. Um, and by the end of this tutorial, again, you should be able to know some rules that apply to to their interior angles. So what does convex mean? Well, let me give you an example of a shape that's not convex, um, and you might get the idea here. This shape is not convex. This is convex, this is convex. Here's a, another convex shape. But this is not convex because it has this portion here, which is concave, right? Concave means it kind of looks like a cave, it bends back in, into itself. And the way that you can tell that something is concave is you, if you extend one of its lines and that line goes back to hit its own shape. You'll see what I mean by a minute. Like if we extend this line here, we keep going here, it hits itself again. So if you can extend a side of a polygon and go back into the shape again, it is not convex, and all the rules that we're talking about today don't work. This only works for convex polygons, like the ones on the screen here. See how if we extend any line here, we never go back into the shape itself? That is a nice test to let you know that the shape is, um, is indeed convex and is the subject of today's tutorial. Um, so let's do another, another example of a shape that is not convex. This shape is concave. Because as you can see here, we can extend this shape in this direction and, sorry, we can extend this side in this direction inwards and we hit the shape again. We only need one line to be able to hit the shape again and it is a concave polygon and all bets are off. Today's rules don't apply. Alright, so let's talk about these convex polygons on the screen here. What we want to first talk about is we want to first talk about the sum of the measures of interior angles. I'll try to come up with some general pattern. In other words, we want to know what is true when we add up all of these angles. When we add up this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, or the five angles inside a pentagon, or the six, one, two, three, four, five, six angles in a hexagon. What is true about that? And <clears throat> there's a kind of easy way to use your knowledge of triangles to figure out the rule. And there is a there is a formula. We know that if we have three sides, the sum of the interior angles, right, this is all about angles, is 180 degrees. Well, hopefully you know that if you add up all of the angles inside a triangle, you get 180 degrees. So, with if you know that, you can figure out some other things pretty easily. Here we've got four sides, and what we're going to look at right now is what is the relationship between the number of sides and the sum of all the angles. Three sides, the angles add up to 180. Four sides, well, what do they add up to? You might know the rule. You might know that it's 360. This is another pretty common um, f fact that people know. But let's look at how we can figure that out from triangles. We can draw a line straight through the middle here. We have two triangles. 
And we know that this one has 180 degrees, because it's a triangle, and the bottom triangle has 180 degrees. 180 plus 180 is 360. So we can figure out how many degrees is the sum of all the inside angles by just thinking of them as triangles. One triangle, obviously, is one triangle, so it's 180 sides, 180 degrees. A quadrilateral or a four-sided shape can be thought of as two triangles, or 180 degrees plus 180 degrees, giving us a 360 sum of interior angles. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five sides. What we want to think about is what is the fewest number of triangles that we can make, and then we'll know how many degrees are inside of it. Well, we can draw a line here, and we have 180 degrees. And we can draw a line here. We have this another 180 degrees, and this is this triangle here is 180 degrees. So a five-sided shape or a pentagon really has three triangles or 540 degrees in it. Let's do one more, then let's try to see what relationship exists between the number of sides and the sum of the interior angles. Okay, um, I just switched the bottom image to make it an actual hexagon. As I was looking at it, I realized I didn't have a hexagon. Okay, so here we have a hexagon. We got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. <clears throat> so let's see how, what is the fewest number of triangles we could make. Okay, here's one triangle. Right, I tried to draw to that side. Here's a second triangle. Here's a third triangle, and then there's a fourth one on the inside, right? So we've got 180, 180, 180, 180, four 180s, or 720 degrees. So one thing you might notice is for each side, we go up by 180, and we're looking for a formula, a formula that relates sides, which is normally called n, by the way. Normally, this formula, you represent sides as the um, as the variable n, representing n equals sides. We want something that talks about how does n. Actually, I'll write that at the bottom. Right here, some wrong. N. How does n relate to the total degrees? Well, let's look at what we have here. What is, we have three, and well, you can see three times 180 does not equal 180. Hmm. And you can see that four times 180 does not equal 360. Five times 180 does not equal um, 540, but there is a pattern involving these numbers. 6 times 180 doesn't equal 720, but what can we do to 3 <clears throat> that we then multiply by 180? You see 180 is key. You can't get rid of that to get 180. What can we do to 4 that when we multiply by 180, we get 360? Well, we know that it's really 2. What we know is that it's really 2 times 180 gives us 360. 1 times 180 really gives us 180. 3 times 180 gives you 540. Maybe you guessed it. 4 times 180 gives you 720. So what are we doing to n? It's 3 minus 2. 4 minus 2 gives you the 2. 5 minus 2, the number of sides, minus 2, gives you the 3 times 180, which gives us the total degrees, 540. And you got it. The 6 minus 2 is what gives us the 4 times 180 to get the f total degrees of 7. So the formula is, if n is the number of sides, n over here is the sum of the interior angles, what you do is, you say, let me erase this to make it clear. Again, if n is the number of sides, you say n, you multiply n minus 2, the number of sides minus 2 times 180. 
and you get the total degrees. If the sides are 3, the triangle, subtract 2 from 3 to get 1, and multiply by, by 180, and that's what we know is always true, 180 degrees in a triangle. If the sides are 4, if n is 4, subtract 2 from that to get 2, and multiply that by 180 to get the 360 degrees that is in a quadrilateral. If it's a five-sided shape, subtract 5 minus 2 to get 3, times 180 to get 540, which is the t sum of the interior angles in a pentagon. And as you can see from our triangles here, you should see that there's 540 degrees, three triangles. And then you can do this for any shape, whether it's a hexagon or a... What if there were nine sides? That thing is called a nonagon. How many degrees are in that? Now you should know, all we do is we say 9 minus 2, and multiply that by 180. So a nonagon has 7 times 180 degrees, or 1260 degrees as the sum of its interior angles. What about a 10-sided shape? If there's 10 sides, you know that the interior angles add up to scroll a little bit here, to 10 minus 2 times 180, or 8 times 180, which will give us um, 1440, 1440 degrees, if you add up all of the interior angles. Okay, so that's the general formula for the sum of the interior angles of a convex polygon. Okay, so now you can answer a question like this. What is the sum of the measures of the interior angles of an octagon? To do any kind of problem like this now, all you need to know is how many sides there are. So an octagon has eight sides, so n is eight. And then you just plug it into our formula, right? You know it's n minus 2 times 180, or 6 times 180 degrees. which gives you 1080 degrees if you add up all of the angles inside. Now, what if we wanted to know what the measure of one interior angle is? Um, we can only do this if it's a regular octagon. Regular means that all the sides and angles are the same. And let me just show you what I mean by an example with a triangle. You know that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle are is 180 degrees, the sum of the angles. If you want to know what one angle is, the only way we can know what one angle is based on this information is if the triangle is, if we know something like it's an equilateral triangle, right? An equilateral triangle, all the sides and angles are the same. So we would just take the sum and divide it by the number of sides, or n, 180 divided by 3. If it wasn't regular, if it was like some triangle that was like this, we couldn't tell you, you couldn't say how many degrees were in one angle because some would be bigger than others. Same idea here with um, regular polygons. A regular polygon, regular octagon, regular hexagon, but a regular polygon means that it's just like the equilateral triangle. All the sides and angles are the same. So since this is a regular octagon, octagon every angle is, is as big as the others, and since there's it's an octagon, there's going to be eight angles, just like in a triangle there's three angles. So to get the measure of one angle, we just take 1080 and divide it by eight. And you get the number 135. So in any one angle of a regular octagon, each one is 135 degrees. So let's generalize that formula also. To get the measure of a single angle, one interior angle of a, so if we want one angle of a regular polygon, let's look at what we did a second ago. We used the formula to get the sum of the interior angles like we did on the last page, n minus 2 times 180. That gives us all the angles added up, and if it's a regular, each angle is as big as the others, just like an uh, equilateral triangle. So we can divide by the number of angles or sides, which is just n. 
we got the sum 180 of an octagon divided by 8. So let's try another problem or two like Okay, let's answer the two questions I just typed up on the screen. What is the measure of one interior angle of a regular decagon? Just like a decade has 10 years, a decagon has 10 sides. And our, our formula is right up here. But remember, it's really just the formula for the total number of sides, total number of angles inside, n minus 2 times 180, divided by the number of sides. So if we have 10 sides, it's going to be 10 minus 2, or 8 times 180, divided by the number of sides, 10. Which will give you 144 degrees. So in a regular decagon, each angle is 144 degrees, interior angle. How about what is the measure of one interior angle of a regular septagon? Septagon means a seven-sided shape. So just use our formula. n minus 2 is 5 times 180 divided by 7. And uh, let me get my calculator out. 5 times 180 divided by 7 gives you gives you a decimal. It's not the prettiest number in the world, but each angle is 128.6 degrees in a regular septagon. So there are lots of ways that you can work with this formula. You could, you could have a question like the one on the screen. How many sides does a convex polygon have if the sum of its interior angles is 1620? It's a little different from the other ones, right? They're telling us that the total degrees adds up to 1620, but we don't know what n is. How many sides? So it's just using our formula, but in reverse. You would just say, we know that n minus 2 times 180 equals the sum of the interior angles, which is 1620. So we are just going to distribute the uh, 180 and solve for n, right? So now let's add 360 to both sides. And we end up getting 180n equals, let me write that better, 180n equals 1980. And now all we have to do is divide both sides by 180 and you will get that n equals 11. So this is an 11 sided shape. By the way, if you were then asked how many degrees were in any one single angle, what would you do? You just take 1620 divided by n. Okay, so that's the last problem we're going to do on working with the interior angles of a polygon. Well, there will be a tutorial coming up on the exterior angles of a polygon. And if you want more practice um, on, on an interactive web page or a free worksheet with an answer key, just check out mathwarehouse.com slash polygon. Thanks a lot.